Liberty Flight sponsors 10-Year Tip with Gary Dibley. Well, good evening. It's Monday night. It's nine o'clock. It is time to tin your tip with myself, Gary Dibley, and the ever-capable mod master that is Mark. Um, yes, I've been away. Uh, been away for a, a, a little lot, sort of midweek break. Um, so last week's show was was a bit of a, a pre-record. Um, I do hope you enjoyed staring at my wood for an hour. Um, I did take my wood away with me um, and I was supposed to be frantically sanding. Um, however, I did take another piece of wood away with me um, that needed more attention um, in a shorter time frame. So uh, I'll show you that a little bit later on. Um, wasn't bad, I was making a clock. Um, and I've got all my, all my fingers. Um, they're cut to bits and you'll probably see during some of these videos, <laughs> I think they did take a bit of a bashing. Um, yes, there, were, there was lots lots of things going on. Uh, apart from the fact they were damn dry from all the, all the bits and pieces we're going, I was watching the videos and looking myself and going, Jesus, get some moisturizer on, on those things. Um, if you've been watching, you may have noticed uh, that something happened uh, as from Saturday. And it ha I'm a bit worried about playing this because you all know the SO19 thing and, and me playing this the door may go in. Yes, the Twitter bomb was dropped and uh, I believe it's, it's still gaining momentum uh, and, uh, and you will have a, an update on that um, tomorrow night in uh, Mark's show. So uh, yes, all good fun. Uh, I need I need to crack on quite rapidly tonight because we we do have uh, lots to get through. Um, I'm continuing the wood. I had to continue it when I when I got home. Unfortunately, I, I sort of managed to box myself into a corner where I couldn't do much more other than um, other than sort of apply the coatings. Um, so I, I've got got it to a point this week where we're all all well and good, and and uh, next week we're going to start wiring it up. But it's it's quite interesting to see the process through. And as I say, I'm going to show you my clock a little bit later as well. Um, fingers crossed. I had a few technical problems today. You may well hear, and you may well see. Um, hopefully, uh, a bit of backstagey stuff has has, has sorted all of those out. Um, crack on with my first little vid, and I will catch you back very shortly after this. All right, we're back for another week. Um, I've finished my holidays and uh, and we're back in, in the workshop. I came back to, to, well I did actually take this away with me, with all good intentions of, uh, of, of doing some sanding and bits and pieces and filming while we're away. However, um, it was quite action packed uh, and, um, and none of that happened. Um, so yes, now, I, did, I had this, uh, this come away with me um, and at one point I had to get brutal with it because one sort of word of advice or one thing I've noticed when you drill these out if you're gonna you know leave things sitting in them like I had this this tube in now that is all of a sudden incredibly incredibly tight to get in so uh, it, it appears that I may have to uh, hollow these out a little bit more um, to, to free that in obviously you know the the, the the grain or the, or the the wood has has sucked in a bit. Um, you like the noise? Uh, uh, yeah. So and and I was finishing the clock, which I'll show you in a little bit. Um, we were doing that. So effectively, what I'm going to start doing um, today is uh, sanding down. Um, I'm going to start off using. I'm not going to film me sanding for two hours, but start off using the P180 um, paper. Now this is um, this is aluminium oxide. Uh, sandpaper. Um, it's not your normal sandy paper stuff. Um, I find this this gives a, a much better or a nicer a nicer sand. Um, sorry, I'm not going to start with the P180. I'm going to start with the uh, the coarser stuff, the P80. Um, and then what I'm going to probably be doing is running some channels down in for the wires. Hopefully, we might get to a point where we're going to uh, to wire you know get this wired up. Effectively, what I'm going to be doing to finish now, I've been playing, um, and I, I will show you in a minute um, what I've uh, what I've done with the clock. But on, on the clock, I, I read on a few forums, um, woodworking forums, and um, I've got some of this stuff, the boiled linseed oil. Um, now, on the clock, effectively, what I've done is is I've given that um, a rub over, let it dry for uh, for an hour or so, given it uh, another rub over. 
again let it dry until pretty much the wood can't take any more um, and, and you're wiping the surface clean as, as, you, as you go. Um, now with the linseed oil effectively you can leave that and they say it's best to leave it up you know, for a couple of weeks um, and, and then that sort of uh, it oxidizes so, yeah, something in the, uh, the oxygen forms a, a filmy thing and, and then you can buff it and da da da. But uh, there was a tip on there that if you, if you didn't really want to wait and you wanted to get it um, shined off, effectively you'll cut, you, you cut off the, the process of the, if you like, the linseed oil curing. And you can do that by applying a, a wax. Now, I've, uh, this is, it's quite expensive stuff this, but I'm going to get a lot of use out of it. This is uh, a, a beeswax. Um, this is a, a natural finish because I, I found with the linseed oil I, I got the, uh, the colour that I wanted in, in the clock. Um, and two, three coats of, of the wax allowing sort of a couple of hours in between, coat it on, thin coat. Uh, it's quite easy, I'll, I'll go through the process you know, on, on here. So you're coating it in, you're, you're leaving it to, to, to sort of form film about 15 minutes and then buffing it up um, and then leave overnight again. Um, so what I want to do before I get this actually wired up is, is to actually get it to almost a, um, a finished state. So I'm going to take my bulky sandpaper block, wrap my PE around there like that, and effectively what I'm going to be doing is, is li literally now start taking out some of the, uh, the imperfections in there. just allows you to work that wood and like I say I'm not I'm not gonna sit and film me doing that but you can see straight away how that's taking that back nicely. Um, it's decent stuff, the aluminium oxide paper. It's still sold as sandpaper. It's a bit more expensive than your, your normal stuff. But I find it gives a, um, a damn good finish. So I'm going to go away and I'm going to work with this paper And really all I'm doing is taking out some of the imperfections and I'm also just going to be trying to get to a point where I've got a decent grain um, for the finishing. So I keep saying it, I will go away, uh, carry on with the sanding and I'll pop back in a bit. I had planned this week to do something with some wood and the vamo board, but that's not going to happen as some of the bits I'm waiting on didn't arrive in time. So instead I thought I've got this lovely looking clear box and what I thought I would do is use this, which you might be able to recognise as a lava tube board. So I thought I could pop one of those in there with a single 18650 which with the holder will just fit in there next to the board but with the atomizer coming off the top perhaps and the switch on the side this type is designed to be screwed together so you've got two options could knock out these bits here and add magnets so that it magnetically holds on or you could do what I'm going to do and just screw it together but that means that we're going to need to unscrew it to adjust it and change the battery unless 
I add in a little USB charging board at the base. So basically that will fit into there. Oh. Alright, it's going to go this way around. That's going to fit into there. With the battery connect up there, the board, etc. And in the space, we're going to have a switch up here, which is going to be standard push switch. Make a nice blue one to match the box. That will fit into there. And an atomizer connector over the top here, and this is pretty much central. And then, I need to take off a couple of connections for a couple of micro switches. One for the power here, so that'll be a point. Either side of this, it just won't show very well. I'll take a wire off either side. I'll go to a little micro switch for a push button. And this one. We'll take two wires off this one and that'll be your up button. I won't bother with the down because you can always just cycle through with the up. It might take a little bit extra but it saves on the switch and a lot of faff. And they'll run out to the side here. I've got some micro switches here. Which you can be on second, I'll just grab one. One of these little micro switches for the power and one for the up button. Should do the job rather nicely because they on camera. They stick out quite a way so I can just drill a hole through, glue them in place, and this will just pop out. We just put a top onto it. So they'll go in there. So basically that's what I've got planned out. Now I've just got to work out where all the components are gonna go and how I can fit it in place. Because the first problem we're gonna have is this charging board where it needs to go it's going to get in the way of this post now what I can do is cut a bit out of this board because these two points the positive and negative aren't used we're using the USB connection so I could cut away a section of this piece here carefully and hopefully get it to fit so that's our first job so, out with the Dremel as usual, and carefully. I'm just going to cut into this board. Now, I've already checked, there's no component connections on the back of the board, so it's just a matter of cutting through the circuit. It's easy to do, but... Don't let go like that, otherwise it'll fly off into your face. Back in a sec. Right, so I'm making sure you've got a firm grip. circuit and if I've got this right this will still work which I suppose I better prove I've quickly grabbed the USB power supply of the right type uh, mini USB so I'll just plug it in and as you should be able to see there I've got one red light and a flashing blue light which I know means that this is working and receiving nothing to a battery. So I'm still all good without that bit. So I'll pop that off. And this will now fit down there without getting in the way and fit next to the battery. So all good. I have cheated slightly and removed a few of the little retaining 
lumps which would normally be standoffs for when you put a board in here but I don't want them in place because yeah we ain't got enough room if I put that in there with a battery in it the lid won't fit get those in place so I've taken them out and I'm gonna have to take this one out of here otherwise it's gonna get in the way of the USB board when I come to put that in place Right, well I've been uh, I've been sanding quite a lot um, and and got sort of uh, roughly where I want. I've got most of the uh, most of the blemishes out that, that I needed to. Um, I'm now in a position where, where I'm going to be dropping down um, to the P180 um, and literally I'm, I'm going to be using this to uh, to take out the um, a lot of the if you like this now that the surface scratches and, and bits and pieces like that and this will really sort of uh, start taking out a lot of the marks now this is the one that, that I'm using to sort of work prior to uh, applying a, um, a finish and obviously we've talked about the finish um, and what I'm going to do is, is put up a I'll go and film the clock that I've, I've finished for the mother-in-law and I'll get that up. Now bear in mind this is going to have some, some imperfections in it. I know it's going to have some imperfections in it. I'm not looking for this to be um, perfect. I could spend hours and hours and hours sanding this if I wanted it to, to be an absolute pristine perfect finish. Um, some say, or, or probably would say, I should do that. But I'm going to get it good enough for me. Um, I don't want to waste too long sanding it. Um, it's one of those things, it's a wood mod. Um, if I wanted to revisit it to, to, to sand it back, I'm going to get it as good as it can anyway, um, time permitting. Uh, but obviously bearing in mind this is this was an off cut, this was a, a branch um, of, of the cherry. So I'm going to go away now and do the, the finer sanding. Um, and then when I come back we'll probably uh, be applying a, uh, a first coat of, um, of the linseed oil. Um, I shall pop back into And I've just come into the house to show you the sort of finish that we're talking about. Um, this, this was used in the, the same techniques of using the boiled linseed oil um, and then applying a wax. And this is the other little bit of wood um, that we've been playing with, uh, which is making a, a clock from a, the, the other bit of the trunk from the, uh, from the cherry tree. But just to show you, it's, sort of, it's not, a, not a glossy shine. Um, it's a nice sort of dull when it has a, a sheen to it when, when done that way. Um, there it is. And there we go. Our first little section over and done. And uh, I must say it's, it's very nice to see uh, a lot of uh, new viewers tonight in, uh, in the chat. And uh, most welcome you certainly are. Um, I'm going to pop into our first little uh, advertising break now and uh, when I come back we'll crack on with, uh, with buffing me wood. Liberty Flight sponsors 10 Year Tip with Gary Dibley. Tip with Gary 
And there we go. We are back in the room. And uh, the the observant uh, amongst you, uh, I noticed, uh, obviously recognise that that Mark is. Although we said he was going to be working on the the Vamo board, um, some of his bits just didn't arrive. Um, so that is in fact a lava board um, he's working on. Um, so yes, I'm sure that the Vamo will be coming soon, as, as soon as Mark gets all of his uh, his dueling bits in. Um, just a reminder on on the tweeting and the retweeting, keep tweeting. I I was an absolute. I didn't even you know if someone said to me do you fancy a twitter i thought i pulled um but uh, i i discovered twitter uh, downloaded it on the phone and um wish i never <laughs> the damn thing's not stopped tweeting at me um yes which is good very very good and as i say we will have a, an update on that in in tomorrow's show um again we're, we're, we're looking for, uh, by the time uh, my wood's done, we're looking for suggestions. So if there's anything you do want to see uh, on our shows, once again, just let us know uh, via the forum, um, YouTube, whatever, and uh, or, or even the, uh, the Facebook page. Um, pop your suggestions down and, and we'll do our best to accommodate you. If you've got something that you want modding, um, give us a contact and, and we'll do our best to mod it for you. Uh, as part of the show, um, I'm going to crack on with uh, with Mark's second little video on his uh, his lava box. Like this. So easiest way is to grab a, a pair of snips. If I can find them, there we go. Just a pair of regular snips and just snip it out for the most part. most of it and then just finish it off with a standing knife very carefully. So I've, I've taken Gary's advice and gone for something nice and safe with a grip. So I'll just run the knife down the edge and across. And gets most of it out. And just flat across the case to get rid of the bits that are left over. While I'm speaking of testing things, one thing I should mention is I have already tested the DNA board, um, DNA, lava tube board even. As you can see, that's working at 3 volts. And the battery's got 3.8 volts in it. And what I've done is taken one of the battery holders that I have plenty of, I'm using 651 in this case, and I've added a couple of crocodile clips to the end to make testing of things where I'm working a bit easier and trying to hold wires in place. And one thing you'll be able to see, if I activate this, I'll not be able to see it again, you can clearly see the display through the case if the lights weren't getting in the way. There you go. See the display through the case, so one don't have to worry about anything like that on this board. I can just fit the board in the case and you can just look straight through the lid. So once it's put together, you shouldn't have to take it apart again unless it's to replace the battery or after it eventually dies, which will be quite a while with constant charging. So, next job is to start to figure out where to put all the holes. So, I've had a bit of a go and I've marked out a few places for holes. Um, basically, that's going to be the fire button, very simple, and the atomizer connector. And what I had thought was for the power and the voltage adjust buttons could go either side of the atomizer connector. But there's not quite enough room if you're using a big tank, say, or a large Genesis like the Fogati these buttons would get in the way when you screwed it down so it's not very practical for that just in case so instead I went for somewhere lower down on the case at the side where it's going to be out of the way and with that in mind I've scored out a little bit of the plastic ridges at the back to make the switches fit in better so now it's going to be a matter of drilling pilot holes for all the holes and then getting them done out so small drill bit, centre of the X and carefully carefully 
pieces. Not too much pressure. Thing. with this case in particular the edges are actually contoured uh, there's little ridges all the way around both on the inside and the outside so I've tried to position up the holes either in a ridge or at the top of a ridge just to make it a bit more even and as usual, I'm using the, st the step drill bit, which I've pre marked out at 11 30 seconds, which I know is the size that best suits me for an atomizer connector. So I'll just pop that in the centre. switch. It's 13 mil normally so that's the full drill bit. So I'm going to pop it out the hole and again very carefully. Just let the drill go all the way. Right, so I'm all, all sanded, um, and uh, yeah, I, I've given it as much care as I can. Now, I do have a, a little split in the wood, but that, that is a, I'm calling that a, a character feature, um, purely because the wood was split. Uh, and there is still a couple of little dents in there, but um, that's as much as, as I'm going to give it. Um, you know, it, it's... Uh, it's one that I would probably make better next time, shall we say. Um, different ideas all, already on this. But essentially we've taken that down as much as we can. What I need to do before I can go on, and I do apologise if we haven't had much in the way of, uh, in the way of sort of um, making, but this is uh, the fundamental part. This bit here is, is, is the, I want to get the treatment done. Um, it's, it's easier to treat it first, then add your components, um, rather than trying to treat around your components. So, I've got me, me boiled, uh, linseed oil um, and you can get this stuff this is the the, the B&Q one um, and it's 500 mil bottle and it's about four quid um, and, and that's going to do a lot of a lot of stuff and as I say I'm going to use I'm going to use it this purely because I looked the finish it give on the clock um, if you haven't seen that already uh, I'll show that probably after this video if I haven't already shown it before um, so what I'm going to do with this uh, board linseed oil, you have to be very careful with this. Um, they do say this is this is pretty volatile stuff. They uh, they say using a cloth or brush. Uh, da, da, da. I I always use uh, a bit of paper towel. Um, but under certain circumstances, cloth soiled with linseed oil can self ignite. Um, so dispose of them carefully and dispose of them outside once you've used them. Don't leave them lying around the shed. Uh, I'm just going to pop a little tiny bit of the linseed oil internet tissue. Not much, um, I, I just start off a little bit at a time and I'm just working that in 
in the tube. So I, I don't give it a massive, massive, massive coat. But you can see it starts really bringing out the uh, bringing out the grain in in the wood. I'm not too bothered about getting that down in tolls. I think me me switch position now. It's looking nice. Now this will darken down, and and that's what I want it to do, darken down. Try and get some down in that crack. And that's where your two holes come in handy. Getting some in on that end grain. So you see, all I'm doing is just working this in with the tissue. It pretty much absorbs straight away. I tend to work it in as I'm going, rather than just coating it and leaving it. Because this is my my first coat of three of, of the linseed oil. And at this moment in time, it looks rather light. Now, I don't know on this one whether I'm going to leave it au naturel, as in just leave the, the linseed oil to do its thing, or whether I'm going to use uh, the wax on top. I'm not 100% sure, but if I use the wax that's going to have to be an overnighter anyway before I can do that. So there he is. Um, what I tend to do is, just to keep it off the, the paper, stick it over there like that. And that's now got to dry. Um, let me just go see if I can get down and, and so you can have a look. Sort of how the grain's coming out. A bit like that. Obviously this is going to be filled with our switches and stuff. Um, little nicks in the wood that were obviously they were there. Um, but I think I've got my grain going around that switch. Apart from that, that's annoying. But couldn't be helped. So yeah, I think that's going to be uh, going to be nice. I shall go away now. I'm going to give it me a couple more coats. Um, what I'll probably do is, is show you uh, one that I finished this way, um, and uh, the next stage, obviously, after after the treatment, is going to be um, wiring up or waxing. Um, but we'll see how we go with that. I shall pop away and come back into. Right, we're back again, and um, <clears throat> I've, I've applied a couple of coats of, of this now, and it's in a state where if I run my finger over, you can sort of see that, they, I don't know if you can see it, but a little bit is, is still, you know, residue is still there. So before I, I you know, carry on my next stage, I've got these uh, sort of buffing cloths. I'm just going to give it a, uh, a buff to take the excess oil off. And hopefully you can see that's really, let me see if get focus, it's sort of bringing out that grain y stuff and I've got me split obviously I'm, I'm annoyed with and there's the uh, branchy bit on the other end. Um, but for me this one is, has been a bit of a, an experiment. Um, I've been drying the, uh, the wood for a long old time. Um, and I wanted to do something with it. 
they're just giving it a buff. And you can sort of see against the against the silver, and when that's down in there, it's going to look quite nice, I think. I'm going to get myself a kick ordered, I think, and I'm going to definitely use this in in kick mode with the uh, extension tube and the, uh, and the 18. 500 or 490 or whatever they are battery. So just taking off the excess there and basically what will happen to this, this will have a, uh, a final coat. And you can probably see as I'm touching that, let me see if I can get that up, my finger is, you see it's releasing a bit of the oil. So that's what we're doing, just buffing off that final, final bit. And while this was drying I actually went and cut the grass. But you're supposed to leave this overnight, effectively, to uh, to soak in properly, um, and then that's when I'll apply the uh, apply the wax. But what I'm going to do in advance of that is I'm just going to set up the uh, set up the drill. It might be my end actually. I'm going to set up the. pillar drill and I'm just going to take a little um, take a little bit of uh, wood out so I'm going to channel out so where I've got these uh, all my switches and that going to be running I need to run some little channels now I'm going to use um, the fine let me go down and see there so it's doing most of the routing we've, we've used these um, these little sort of Dremel bits um, and, and that's been run down inside as put you know, first video and, and route it out this way. Um, what I'm going to use is this uh, very fine one here. Um, and I'm just literally going to run it in at an angle and channel some down. Um, and that is so the wires, because particularly in this one with the tube, um, of the, the tube is quite a tight fit um, to go down inside there. So when that tube is, is down, obviously there's there's no room for, for wires. And I'm going to have to solder a, uh, a wire to the, to the body casing of this. Um, and that probably means taking a tiny little chunk out with the uh, with the Dremel, um, and obviously running a channel then just down inside that that wire is is going to sit in, and I'll pull it back up through uh, either the switch or you know, pause is probably just going to be a little button sat down inside. Um, again, channeled out, running up to the switch. I'll switch the pause on this, um, and then I've got my holes running out to my Etsy connection. So channeling. Um, and then it's going to be uh, wiring and I, I don't think we're going to be on the wiring in, until next week um, because I do want to get this uh, finished up I'm going to have to probably take out with with uh, with this one as well a very tiny little bit around the top of here um, and a very tiny little bit around the inside of here um, for this tube to, to go in a bit easier than what it is um, it's a damn tight fit at the moment um, it was damn hard to get it out so I'll go away. I'll set up the uh, set up the pillar drill and um, pop back in two. And there we go. We're back in the room. And uh, yes, finally get a, uh, a a coating on on the wood. And uh, I was quite surprised actually. I I didn't give that as much um, as much sanding as as I thought I was going to. Um, but it didn't turn out all that bad. Um, it, it, now the, the the sort of the oil is, is if you like, calmed down a little bit. Um, it's it's looking quite good. Um, and next week, obviously, we're going to be uh, be wiring that up. But um, yeah, it just goes to show a little bit of elbow grease, and um, I was buffing away for ages. Uh, I'm going to run into my second lab break. I will come back very shortly after this. Flight sponsors 10 Year Tip with Gary Dibley. Liberty Flight sponsors 10 Year Tip with Gary Dibley.
Ten-year tip with Gary Dibley. Tell you what, he's he's having all sorts of problems, mainly finger trouble tonight. Um, I, I take a week off, and uh, and it all goes to uh, goes to pot. Um, takes a little while to get back into it, and especially because I pre-recorded the the last show, so effectively I've I've had sort of two weeks off. Um, yeah, do apologise. Cut the finger off. Um, so yes, on to on to uh, our next little section of videos. And I will say, most definitely, I think, I do think, after my first abysmal attempt at uh, wood, um, I think, learnt a few lessons, got a few, uh, and, and they weren't expensive tools. The, the little um, bits that I'm using, I think you can get those for about six quid for a pack or two for the Dremel. And they, they are really good bits of kit I've, I've used them quite a lot you know we, we shaped the big clock with them um, this one and, and some other little bits and obviously we made the uh, we made the DNA mod um, with a broken screen um, but yes gradually getting there with the wood I, th I think the uh, the next one is is, is going to be uh, is going to be half decent I think um, on with our next little bit of video and he's scaring around he's got to find the right one to play um, back with uh, with Mark's final part this week of his uh, of his lava box and occasionally clear away the debris and this is quite a brittle plastic so you need to be very careful about not putting a lot of pressure on it and not using too much speed. And that's us all the way through. And for these, I'm not sure exactly what size hole I'm going to want, but I think the first step on here should just work nicely. So I'll give it a go with that. size now. Indeed they are. And if I just clear away the debris inside of here. I should be able to I think when I clean them off just going to pop through, only just, so it's going to be pretty much surface mounted on there, so it's going to be about clicking it in place so it won't get knocked when you're carrying it around, things like that. So back when I've had a chance to tidy up. And when I, 
When I was marking out these holes, I used a piece of masking tape around to mark where I wanted the pilot holes to go. And that was to mark it onto a shiny, shiny surface, made it easier. But also adding the masking tape helps to give you a nice clean edge on the outside. As it holds everything together, it's less likely to get scratches or damage around the outside when you're drilling. So it's always a good idea to use it, if you remember. So I need to check the holes are correct now. What I've done is run the blade of the knife around the insides of the holes to get rid of any swath that's built up there. So that switch will fit in there nicely, nice and flush with the case. And uh, that'll work rather well there. So that's one. And the atomizer connector, I know it will be tight. And indeed it is. It won't quite fit all the way, not without some pressure. And if you put pressure, there's a risk that you're going to split the case. So I'll need to run a bit of sandpaper around the inside just to make it slightly bigger. Talking about a fraction of a millimetre difference to what you need. So that's all good. And then these two need to fit through here. And as you can see, I'll hold this in place probably. That one will work nicely, it just pushes out from the case. And this one as well just pushes through, but there's a bit of material in the way just on this side, so I need to use the Dremel again with the same cutoff disc. I just want to take away a little bit of this edge so it doesn't get in the way of the switch. So very carefully. Quickly remove those bits away. So basically, I've got a square channel cut out here now. So, when I pop the switch in, ready that the plastic wasn't getting in the way, of course. So, we're using the Dremel at such a high speed, it tends to melt the plastic a little bit. And therefore, it will get in the way. I'll just run the tip of the blade through the hole. Now I'm gonna pop this down this side. It now sits nice and flush. I can easily push that button through there and through there. So then butts and butts and bits are now done. I'll just be able to glue them in place once all soldered up. The other job I have to do involves the USB connector. It's going to sit down there, so I'm going to need a hole in here for the connector. And that I'll deal with next time. Right, it's quite hard to see and I'm struggling with light today, um, but I have channeled out and if you can see just down in there, um, there is a channel running right the way down through to the bottom um, there, I think I'm slightly out of focus, now I am. So there is a, a channel running from that hole there that goes up to, to our ATI connection. I'll run a channel in just so uh, and one round the side there as well that goes through to the switch section. Now those are in place purely because um, obviously when I put the tube in, um, like I said earlier, I need a channel for those wires to actually run in. So next week is, is when we're going to uh, start wiring this all up. But effectively where we're at now is our ATI um, is going to be a damn tight fit in there. That is not going to need any, any glue whatsoever I don't think. It's tight as buggery to get that in and out. Um, I haven't routed that out purely because I, I'm, I'm going to bash that one home 
Um, I've routed this out a little bit more, so now, although it's still a tight squeeze, we can get our, our cap in there, and I've routed out our switch bit ever so slightly. So you can sort of see, you know, where we're going with that. I don't think it's, it's actually turning out that bad. You know, it's quite funky. Quite liking that little, uh, little mod. It is. Look. How could you not say that's good? I'm even impressed myself. Hey, Dibley may well have conquered his fear of wood. Um, question is, is it going to work when it goes together? <laughs> that would be a, a complete bugger. You can see the switch is still tight in there. My Etsy connection is still tight. I may well route that out a little bit more. Um, thing that I'm going to do now is it's time <clears throat> is I'm going to apply my final coat uh, final coat of linseed oil um, before letting it rest so I might as well just go ahead and get that done um, and next week we're all about wiring gluing and, and making it work I do apologize if this is this has been all about um, all about woodwork um, which I'm not very good at or I'm getting better I'd, I'd like to think so I'm just dabbing on me the final layer of this stuff now um, and what I'm going to let this one do is this one is, is going to sit uh, and it's going to sit overnight um, to have a good chance to all get absorbed and all of that sort of stuff and then um, I'm going to be uh, as from sort of tomorrow or you know when we're, when we're or today so when we're live I should have should have possibly um, if I can show you maybe I'll do it after I finish speaking this and go oh yes there we go I've applied the a coat of beeswax I'm not going to film that but it's, it's the same process effectively all we're doing is, is applying a, 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 a very sort of thin coat of that um, beeswax um, and we let that uh, sit for sort of about 15 minutes and, and, until it dries um, and then effectively you polish it off and it says to sort of leave um, leave a, you know, round about sort of two hours before you uh, before you apply another coat um, you can see already how that's really sort of bringing out now the uh, bringing out the grain it's difficult under the lights um, this is an oil it does take uh, need to sit in as I say you can leave this uh, this finish um, this oil finish if, if you wanted to, to leave this uh, just literally coated with the linseed but what I would probably suggest is is not using it for or, or not attempting to finish it for a good couple of weeks three weeks four weeks um, because the linseed oil actually reacts with uh, with oxygen and and forms a, um, uh, a sort of a, a coating um, it gets harder, it forms a coating and, and it sort of um, does the thing, whatever it does. Um, but as I say, I'm going to be effectively halting that process by applying the beeswax. Um, now the beeswax, they do say, doesn't give as hard a finish as it would do to let this do its thing naturally. Um, so to let this do its thing naturally obviously is, is going to be better um, you're only applying sort of a, a couple of microns of, of um, a couple of microns of, of finish when or even a you know, micron at a time when, when you're doing the uh, the beeswax finish uh, but I like that that finish so that's the one I'm going that's what I'm going to go for and I intend to over the course of a week um, while this is drying I'm probably going to be uh, applying sort of a couple of coats a night um, of, of the beeswax and, and then just letting it set overnight. I'm going to go away, I'm going to pop this uh, to one side now to, to soak in, um, give it a polish and then uh, take it into the house to, uh, to have an overnight sitting session. And hopefully um, after this little vid when I come back to you I, I may well show you, uh, show you it with, um, with a coat of the beeswax. Probably won't look any different to this uh, but it, it just it gives it a nice sort of uh, a nice sheen. But I'm liking that. I really am, really am liking this one. Uh, apologies, as I say, if it's, if it's been all about uh, wood and cutting and this that, and the other. We'll be on to wires and solder next week. 
with all that said it's back to me in the studio um, here we go and there we are and and I have been I have been giving uh, lots of attention to to that as I say a, a few more coats of, of oil um, because my crack was concerning me um, and I, I did want to make sure that was fully lubed um, with the linseed oil uh, to make sure it didn't split any further um, yes so don't forget we've got loads coming up this week uh, we have vapor scene uh, tomorrow night with Mark where I'm sure we'll be getting an update on the uh, on, on the Twitter bomb um, on on I forgot what day it is on Wednesday we've got VT Dork uh, Thursday the Haze Hour um, Sutton on Saturday and Dave's Tackle Box on Sunday I'm going to play this one more time I'm sure you're going to be seeing this lots Yes, it is the Twitter bomb, and uh, yes, I've recently discovered tweeting myself. Um, so, all good fun. Keep it up, and well done for all those who have participated um, very recently. What I'm going to do, I am going to uh, very rapidly wind this up tonight. Um, it's, it's been it's been a long one, um, and returning fresh from holiday, it's it's been <laughs> extremely difficult remembering what buttons to press, and we did have a few technical difficulties beforehand. Um, but with all that said I will be back next week um, we will be a bit more professional um, and you will see us start assembling uh, assembling the, the wood mark there's, there's quite a bit to do in there um, as I say the, the tube that's got to run down in there we've got to do that quite a specific way so it might, might be in depth it might take five minutes I don't know uh, in the meantime if there is anything like we said earlier that you do want to see on on tin your tip either me or Mark make um, put your suggestions forward either on the Facebook page um, the forum you can tweet me um, you know give us give us your suggestions if you've got a mod um, that we haven't looked at before and and you want it dissected and, and made into something else just uh, just give us a shout and we will see what we can do for you uh, with all that said it has been emotional once again guys um, thank you very much for tuning in uh, don't forget tune in the rest of this week uh, and I will see you at some point in the chat cheers guys Tin Your Tip with Gary Dibley.